Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Yorki065 and today we have some iRacing content with the Road to 4K series where I'm in the hunt for getting 4K iRating and we're doing it in the iRacing Le Mans series driving the HPD and today we are going to be racing at Sebring Raceway. Currently just sat on the uh, on the grid basically just waiting for the formation lap to begin and as you can see I'm kind of fiddling around a little bit with the uh, with the HUD, trying to get it set up in a uh, a better organised and more suitable layout. As I've had some feedback from a number of people uh, about the latest set of videos, ever since I've got the uh, the new BenQ monitor, where it's just the ultra wide. It looks quite good, but uh, it's not ideal for uh, mobile devices and tablets, as uh, the text can be quite difficult to read at times especially in the relative so I've increased the size of the HUD here in uh, iRacing to hopefully make it a little bit more visible uh, for you guys and obviously uh, with that and altering also the uh, the actual capture window and going back to a 16x9 uh, uh, aspect ratio rather than the ultra wide 21x9 it means I'm having to rearrange the HUD to try and fit everything on the screen within that capture window Fortunately, the uh, the formation lap here on Sebring is the entirety of the lap, so I've got plenty of time to fiddle around with the HUD and get it into a better, more suitable layout. Obviously, we're trying to do a little bit of fuel saving as well. So, running the uh, running the car down in fuel mix one at the moment to uh, try and conserve conserve as much of the fuel as possible. We'll obviously make sure that we don't do the same mistake as we did last time. And we'll actually turn that back up to Fuel Mix 8 for the green flag. So we're just trundling around. Going to be starting from 4th position on the grid. And for those of you who are wondering why the camera is moving around slightly and things are slightly off centre. It's because I'm using the Track AR5. It's allowing me to uh, track my head movements and uh, that gets correlated into the game. And it allows me to look into the apexes of corners and look to the sides of the car double check wing mirrors and basically give you a bit more situational awareness hoping to do a video review on uh, on that in the future at some point so if you're interested and don't want to miss out on the review of the track ir5 hit that subscribe button below with the bell notification that way you will be notified when that video ends up going live hopefully before christmas but we'll see you try and fit it into what is a pretty busy schedule I've got a number of other videos that I still need to do and uh, get ticked off out the list as well. So, coming in towards the last third of the lap, still just trying to conserve as much fuel as possible. The less fuel that you can uh, use here on this lap, the further you can go into the race. Obviously, it's very marginal differences, but it could be uh, it could be potentially useful. When it comes to the actual pit stops, may need to take on a slightly less amount or something like that. And the field just getting backed up a little bit because the LMP1 cars, you can see just up there in the distance, they haven't been released by the safety car as of yet, nor will they be until the safety car gets to the pit lane entry, which is after the final corner here. So there's the engineer just telling us they're about to get ready turn the fuel mix back up to race mode with fuel mix 8, not making the same mistake as we did at Nürburgring, and now we're just waiting for that green light which is there, didn't really fancy nipping up the inside of the guy directly in front of me as uh, that would have been very tight in a three wide situation going into the final corner so now we're underway racing, there's a whole load of smoke up in front and a car flipping down the start finish straight so we're going to go to the far left to avoid him and uh, stay out of getting collected in any of that carnage coming into turn one we've held on to that fourth position which is good so let's see what we can do about the guys up in front Alex Trainer and Timo Hayden two very very quick HPD drivers so I'm going to struggle to keep up with those guys but we'll see what we can do with Guido immediately here in P3 in front with a he's got the pace I mean he out qualified me and qualified third obviously qualified behind so I'm sure he has but it all depends on what his actual race pace is going to be like we've got a guy Fairly close, I vote. Pretty close to the rear end of my car as well, so gonna need to be relatively careful. PT, P2 and P3 battling slightly as we're coming up. 
towards the next 90 degree right hand up. Guido having to uh, try and go the long way around as Timo is defending the inside line. So we're already getting a little bit of action and this is allowing us to keep relatively close to Timo but Alex up in the lead is disappearing off into the distance has already got a nice healthy gap two and a half a seconds or so to myself holding on to the back of uh, Guido although leaving about half a second or so between myself and him just so I've got that extra little bit of room and that little bit of a buffer to play with it's coming through the penultimate turn now onto the back straight getting a pretty decent run off of that corner gap still basically maintaining but Ivo is tenth of a second or two tenths of a second closer to the rear of my car than I am to uh, to Guido up in front so here we go coming into the final turn for the first time Ivo is getting a little bit close there as we were going underneath the bridge but uh, he avoided making contact with me so now begins lap two and this is a multi-class race as well the race length is uh, an hour long in total but uh, yes yeah, multi-class race we're in the middle of the three classes top class being the LMP1 cars we're in the HBD which is effectively an open top LMP2 car albeit quite old and a little bit outdated but still very very fun and rewarding car to drive it's certainly my favorite car that's uh, on the iRacing series as we're closing up quite nicely to Guido there under the braking for the hairpin and then the slowest of the three classes are the GTE cars so we have some parts where we'll be being lapped by LMP1 cars and there'll be parts where we're lapping the GTEs so uh, yeah the traffic can get it quite interesting at times holding on to the back of Guido just about if we can keep the car or keep him less than 1.2 seconds in front we can hold on to uh, hold on to the slipstream or the dirty air off the back of the car Obviously the dirty air isn't ideal going through the corners but it's it's there good on the straights for reducing that drag allowing us to accelerate up to a higher speed just that little bit quicker but obviously Ivo is uh, holding on to the back of us as well he's actually uh, quite a bit closer to the rear of my car than I am to the rear of Guido so let's run for a lap coming into turn one should be fifth gear try and apex at that cone up on the uh, up on the fence on the inside I do sometimes drop into fourth there it's gone through uh, turn two which is a tiny little kink now in turn three second gear left hander through four now into five try and hook up a late apex before we come into turn six and then it's big bend very gentle completely flat out and pretty much every single car before coming into the hairpin breaking just after the uh, the first set of cones, a set of three cones that are there before coming through eight. Now coming into uh, into turn nine. Turn ten is this slightly awkward uh, right hand up, it's 90 degree right down into second gear before coming through turn 11, which should be completely flat out, providing you've got a nice stable truss worthy rear end through 12. Now into turn 13, tower corner another slightly awkward and a little bit technical corner but it's quite nice and rewarding when you do get it right We've got two flat out left handed kinks that was the second now we're coming into turn 15 this is Le Mans section getting it pretty badly wrong coming into turn 16 now we're out onto the back straight known as Ullman straight and yeah got quite a bit of oversteer going through the exit of uh, turn 15 which wasn't ideal Ivo closing up onto the back of us as we come into the sunset bend the final corner turn 17 getting very close to that inside wall as well for accelerating away out of it did not want to be getting any closer than that absolutely nailing that apex but yeah really do like this circuit Sebring have had a lot of uh, a lot of good results here in the past really nice flowing circuit once you get into the rhythm of it 
it's really quite a challenge with the uh, with the bumps. It's uh, built on an old, I believe, World War Two airstrip, and there is a much more modern airstrip that is there, kind of out the back side of the circuit. But uh, yeah, the concrete slabs very very bumpy these days, which really gives its unique character and uh, kind of adds adds a slightly more technical element for the engineers in terms of uh, getting a good stable setup that handles the uh, handles the bumps and the concrete slabs quite well. You see some parts like these tarmac sections here are quite nice and smooth but there's patches of concrete dotted around at various different points such as here where the track is much more bumpy as you can see kind of coming out towards one of uh, one of the old landing strips which uh, has kind of been tarmac and paved over as you can see in places before coming out onto uh, onto this back stretch here I believe this used to be one of the old runways but that was a much better run going through Le Mans this time round we were able to uh, pull out a bit of a gap to Ivo as well I think is actually under threat from uh, Bruno behind you can see in the rearview mirror at the top of the screen Bruno is there on the inside has managed to get the move done. So Bruno is now up into 5th position, demoting Ivo down into 6th. Better run coming through turn 1 that time. A little bit tighter to the apex, but still not quite tight enough. And you can see Guido starting to pull away the gap, lurking in around 2 seconds. Oh, big bit of oversteer there, as it's getting hard on the throttle. Coming out through the exit of five. Managed to hold on to it though. But uh, that's obviously not going to help the tyres. Also, as you can see, it's cost me a bit of time as now Bruno is right there on my rear bumper. So I imagine he'll be looking to try and uh, gain another, pos another position relatively soon. But. Uh, not going to make it easy for him unless in, unless he does actually manage to get physically alongside me. He got pretty close there coming into uh, into turn 10 but wasn't far enough up alongside for me to just kind of lift out and let him go through. So I think he was coming from the uh, towards the back of the grid and uh, so far has proven to be a relatively quick driver. We've managed to gap Ivo quite nicely. Uh, this lap is a bit more on the pace. I'm kind of very close to uh, my fastest lap that I've set so far in this race, which is a 148.7, which is okay. It's not not amazing. Could be quicker, but still fairly reasonable. And as you can see, with the uh, with the delta bar up the top there, it's basically showing how much time I'm gaining or losing to that fastest lap. 48.8 that time a better run coming through turn 1 really lean on a downforce of this uh, HPD at times and as you can see I'm about a tenth of a second up although losing a little bit of time coming through turns 3 and 4 as well through 5 okay. obviously the fastest lap that I've done so far is slightly earlier on in the race so fresher tyres provide a little bit more grip but as the fuel load is bleeding off, the car's getting a little bit lighter. It's therefore also becoming slightly more nimble and uh, accelerates and pulls away off corners a little bit better as well. Just using trying trialing first gear going through turn ten there. Just seeing what that was like. I had made a couple of tweaks too to set up prior to uh, prior to the start of this race to try and find a little bit more speed, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to show you the setup that I've been using here in uh, here in this race or any of the races as uh, kind of representing Geodesic Racing. They create their own setups and don't like having them public, so unfortunately, not going to be showing them for you guys. 
Just take my word that I had made a couple of tweaks uh, to the setter to try and find a little bit more speed and Bruno closing up in the uh, slipstream a little bit in the approach to the final corner here. Both of us fairly even in terms of our line. Pretty similar there. Going through that final corner. And now just going to set a new uh, new fast that pushing a little bit harder. That's a much better run going through turn one once again and you can see just the amount of time that I gained over Bruno behind managed to uh, extend the gap out from just a couple of tenths of a second up to half a second just a bit more confidence going through that turn one and especially when nailing the line like that as well carrying the, uh, the correct amount of speed we saw the gap open up and also the uh, the time in the lap time delta as well it out by about half a tenth or so So, gap to Guido, staying round about the same despite the pressure from behind. See the first of the uh, the GTEs on the relative board there. At the top, it's a good 30 seconds up the road though, so it's going to be a while before we come up to uh, come up to the back of them. Alex and Timo checking out up ahead, disappearing off into uh, into the distance. I said they were very very quick HBD drivers and have. Yeah, never really been able to keep up with them. So, it's kind of a learning learning experience for me, trying to find the, uh, the slight quirks of the car. I used to race the car an awful lot before I had uh, a bit of a break from my racing. Not overly intentionally, just, yeah, I didn't play it for a huge amount of time. Mainly focusing on trying to get uh, Project Cars 2 videos out. Uh, slightly mad allowed me to basically start covering other games again and that's going to be us well off wide so there's my first off track of the race lifting out of the throttle there as well as uh, going through that dirt and gravel that's kind of there on the outside in and amongst all that grass obviously a lot less grip than the the actual racing surface where I was kind of still turning through the corner it's very easy to lose the rear end going out that wide like that uh, especially when keeping it hard on the throttle so eased off the throttle a little bit just to try and make it a little bit safer for myself to get back onto the circuit despite uh, also trying to obviously avoid losing too much time to uh, to Bruno as well and allowing him to get too close or maybe even potentially overtaking me but we haven't really lost any time to uh, Guido despite that mistake obviously you can see I lost some time to the uh, my fastest lap delta which was set on the previous lap a couple of people talking in the, talking in the chat there back and forth having a little bit of a uh, discussion maybe a slight argument between each other, between themselves. Not entirely sure what it is that they're actually talking about, but you get it from time to time. Possibly had a slight altercation somewhere along the line. And once again, getting very, very close to that inside wall. Really uh, running the risk of scraping the paint down the right-hand side of the car up against that uh, that concrete barrier. Taking it a little bit easier this time going through. Turn 1 didn't want to run out wide once again. But uh, once more, managed to extend the gap to Bruno behind. It looks like we're starting to catch Guido slightly as well. Only by a tenth or two. Although my run going through turns 3, 4 and 5 weren't quite as good as his. But we did get the gap just under 1.9 sec uh, one, uh Sorry, 2 seconds for a moment. I will get my words out eventually. But yeah, we did get get the gap momentarily under two seconds. But I'm very much looking forward to uh, hitting the back of the traffic. Not literally, but uh, coming up onto them as I feel that uh, running through the traffic and picking my way through is one of my strong points. 
And I know that some other people struggle a little bit more to uh, get through the traffic quite as effectively. Not necessarily saying that I'm dangerous and kind of go for stupid moves. I just either get a little bit more luck on my side or kind of predict and uh, line up the passes a little bit better than some other people. It's quite easy to kind of get trapped into a situation where you're right on the rear bumper or underneath the rear wing of uh, of a slower class car in front and that's uh, pretty detrimental through some corners and some parts of the track trying to accelerate off a slow corner it's not ideal it's definitely not ideal going through uh, medium or high speed turns as HPD has quite a bit more downforce than the uh, than the GT car so they can carry quite a lot more speed going through uh, some of those turns than they can so timing is critical and I may not be perfect in traffic but I certainly do feel like I'm slightly better than some other people so still pushing on pushing on strong still in the 48s at the moment obviously traffic which we're soon approaching is going to have an effect on the on those lap times. Still trying to uh, hold relatively close to Guido in front. I feel like I'm probably not really going to close up too much more in the open air, but the traffic could end up helping us out. Just catching the curb on the inside there. Going through turn 13, which isn't ideal. Kind of want to be avoiding doing that if I can, as obviously it does cost you grip, and therefore makes it a little bit more difficult to uh, actually get through the corner quite as effectively. And it looks like Guido's going to just about be able to pass the, uh, the Porsche 911 RSR before the final turn. I think we'll end up coming across him either on the start finish straight or potentially coming into the uh, into the final corner. Just a slight twitch there going over the bumps. And yeah, you can see closing up quite a bit in the uh, in the slipstream, but Catching him right on the apex of turn one, which is not ideal. This is allowing Bruno to close up behind. We've also got the LMP1 leader coming through as well. Managing to position ourselves in such a way to prevent Bruno from having a look coming into turn three there. Quite a bit of oversteer once again. Coming off the exit of turn five. But yeah, here is the LMP1 leader. So GT cars and LMP1 cars kind of hitting us at the same time. That's going to be... Uh, a very interesting mix in managing that and trying to avoid losing too much time. Here comes P2, so we're we'll giving the room on the uh, on the inside there, coming through turn nine, slot in behind, but still positioning myself in a defensive manner to uh, prevent Bruno from trying to make a lunge with the LMP1 car pretty close in front, and I had to break a little bit earlier than I would have liked to by about five maybe 10 meters or so, catching a little bit of dirt and gravel off the XL13. Yeah, very much under pressure from behind now. Obviously, we've lost time to Guido up in front, but hopefully somewhere along the line, when we come up to more of the GTE cars, we'll be able to close that back up. It's just unfortunate that we caught that Porsche right on the apex of turn one. felt like rather than possibly trying to go around the outside or trying to dive down the inside it's a little bit too far back for that so I kind of just had to settle in behind and kind of line myself up for a tighter or tighter exit and pass on the left there so now Guido's kind of side by side going into turn one with someone so if we can get a good run through here we may be able to close up a little bit of time a little bit wider turning a little bit later than I would have liked LMP1 car coming up behind. He's having a little bit of a look down the inside there, but he was coming from too far back and I was already committing to the corner. It was quite a dangerous situation, even though some LMP1 drivers still make stupid dive bombs and stupid lunges. Kind of got away with that one in that he managed to uh, slow down enough to avoid going into, uh, into the back of me there. 
yeah, very much now with the uh, with the GTEs. So why is looking both forwards and also backwards? So the NP1 car goes through, getting caught up behind the GTE once again. I thought it was maybe potentially going to leave the door there open on the outside, but then ended up closing it. Be able to slip round the outside of him there, going through turn 11. We've got the NP1 car. He's having a little bit of a look behind, but. He does the right thing of settling in and remaining there. We'll pass this Ferrari for the two left-handed kinks. Slightly three wide for a brief moment as the uh, LMP1 car was coming through whilst deploying the hybrid. But yeah, not having the best time through the traffic at the moment. Kind of... Uh, Going against what I was saying earlier, I felt I was pretty strong through the traffic. Just kind of being unlucky in a little, in a few places, catching them just the wrong time. Same again, slightly there through uh, with that GTE car. Just a little bit too close on the uh, on the exit. But nonetheless, we're through, and it's like uh, Timo's catching the l some traffic in a few awkward places now as well. So hopefully we can bring this gap back down. It was four seconds in and around the uh, the start finish line. So it looks like we've already gained a few tenths of a second. But obviously we've got to navigate through the traffic that he's already uh, already passed. Here we go with the Porsche. Slipping down the inside of him before uh, 13. And then the BMW getting a little bit of out of shape there. Going through the mid corner. Which made the, uh, the exit a little bit more difficult than I would have liked. I had to hesitate on the throttle a little bit more. One of the good things about all this is that we are extending the gap to uh, to Bruno behind. It's now over 1.2 seconds, so we've broken the toe to him. Past that Ferrari, he looked like he had quite a bit of damage there. So coming up on the next car. Oh, getting caught with that BMW as he was coming back across my nose to uh, dive into the pit lane. We've got two LMP1 cars coming here as well, which are going to make contact. One of them spinning across the circuit there. But yeah, the guy in front apologising to uh, the other LMP1 car, accepting the blame. He's saying that I kind of closed the door on the gap that he was trying to go for, but well, there was more space to the right of the LMP1 car than there was between myself and him. So uh, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit of an interesting choice, but. I think the uh, the hybrid can sometimes catch the LMP1 drivers out a little bit. Speed difference can be pretty substantial at times, especially if uh, one car is still very much deploying hybrid and the other one has uh, has finished and is just kind of running on the normal combustion engine. So I think is the the scenario that happened there. Fortunately, though, we didn't get caught up in that, so still going, pushing on. Pushing on, MP4. We'll get past this Ferrari before uh, turn 15. Sneaking down the inside there, taking a lot of curb and just straddling that quite nicely. Getting a pretty decent run there through uh, the penultimate turn. And onto the back straight, Guido. It's now four and a half seconds up the road, so lost a little bit of time. And uh, in this run through the traffic, getting a reasonable run there through uh, the final corner though, Sunset Bend. Not really losing too much time with the GTE that was there. And a 
pretty good run through turn one. It was a little bit tight on the entry, which kind of made the uh, to hesitate just the tiniest little bit coming through the exit. Couldn't quite get on the throttle quite as hard as as I would have liked to have done. So I probably would have ended up running out a little bit wide. Catching this Ferrari in just the right spot. So we should be able to clear him before uh, we get to the braking zone for turn 10. It's going to be pretty close. It's going to be side by side going into the braking zone, in fact. So running the tighter line in. Well, it was already there. As you can see, it costed me about three tenths of a second or so, but. Past him. Now it's Bruno's turn to uh, try and get on bike. Shy of the apex there. Didn't have the most ideal line through uh, 15. Through Le Mans corner. Just kind of caught the curb a little bit awkwardly going through the uh, through the left. And there we go with uh, with P2 in the GTE class. P1's a little bit further up the road. This is uh, P14, so lap down. Almost going into the wall on the inside there of turn one. Recognised that. Uh, it's turning a little bit more than I would have liked to have done and had to kind of double stab at the corner. There's no real way through uh, through and past the GTE cars going through turn 3, 4 and 5. So I just kind of had to sit there instead. Bruno getting pretty close under braking there. Almost for a moment, it looked like he was going for a little bit of a, a dive bomb on me, but he was just trying to uh, lunge down the inside of the of the uh, the GTE car. So here we go, coming up towards P1. I'm not going to be able to pass through 15 or 16, so the next best opportunity is going to be uh, on the back straight. So it's just a case of uh, setting ourselves up for a good run through that penultimate turn and getting a good drive coming off. We'll slip on uh, past him and then immediately tuck back over across to give the stitch stream back to the uh, back to the Porsche and take it away from Bruno, who is closing up as you can see, but he's going to be close enough to uh, make a move down the inside coming into. The final turn, but he is very much there, just 0.2 seconds behind and again he's got a slightly better run coming down the start finish straight, he's looking to the inside coming into the first corner but you need to be closer than that to make a move down the inside and I've recognised that so far in this race I've had quite a bit more confidence and been able to carry a fair bit more speed going through turn one than uh, Bruno has. Possibly a slight difference in setup and downforce levels there. So I felt pretty confident that I didn't really need to defend the inside line too hard and I'd be able to uh, kind of take the, the more sweeping wider line around the outside and still hold on to the position. As you can see though, he's, uh, he's pretty strong in a number of places around the track. Closing that gap and, gap up and getting very, very close to the rear of my car. A little bit of oversteer there through 10. Managed to get the car settled before 11. But yeah, he certainly seems like he may be running a little bit less downforce than uh, than I am. He seems to be a little bit quicker on the straights. Obviously, he's got the added benefit of the slipstream as well. Uh, judging by the fact that he's losing a little bit of ground coming through the uh, the faster corners, 
would indicate that he's uh, he's got less downforce than I have. And then obviously he had a straight as well. With him closing up and me losing a little bit of time to him. Getting a much better run that time though, coming off the uh, off the final corner and he's diving into the pits to make his pit stop. As you can see, I've got 7.8 kilograms of fuel left, as indicated on the uh, Motet display behind the wheel. 7.7, 7 7.6 now, it's there on the right hand side. Obviously when I'm going through the corners, the wheel does obscure some of the numbers that are there on the display. So we are kind of into the uh, into the pit stop window. It's just under 30 litres of fuel that I'll be taking on board in the pit stop and the uh, the max the fuel tank can take in these races in this car is 45 kilograms so got plenty of room for it but it was probably trying to do uh, a bit of an undercut by pitting in early and uh, trying to find some clear air and see if he can uh, leapfrog me in that way but I'm kind of feeling that uh, it wasn't that long ago that we actually passed the GTE cars. So if I was to pit now to try and counter him, I'd probably just end up dropping myself into the GTE field and the traffic once again with him. Whereas right now, I've got a load of clear air up in front. As you can see by the relative. All, well, the, the next four cars up in front of me are all in the same class as indicated by the... Uh, the blue background behind the the race number there's me just having a look on the relative just to trying to see if I can find where uh, Bruno has actually popped into but I've not seen him yet and there's a number of GTE cars there listed already so surely he's gonna pop himself in or he's come out behind them and yeah he's not even appearing on the relative board for me so that's basically confirming my uh, suspicions and therefore pretty much uh, consolidating my choice to carry on running until I basically run the tank dry and then come in for uh, for my stop try and make use of this clear air that I've got here to try and uh, set some quicker lap times in and try and defend and hold on to that fourth position and minimize the chances of uh, the undercut working for him So we do have a bit of lap traffic here with uh, Fabrice up in front. He's down in 12th position in class. But uh, should be able to close up on him as you can see relatively relatively quickly. It's just about finding the right time to, uh, to pass and not lose too much time. We've also got an LMP1 car coming up behind as well. So we need to keep an eye out for that. Better run there through turn 13 got the slipstream now so I'm going to look to the outside of him and he should let me go through coming into uh, 15 here and indeed he does it's a little bit tight for me though sun's starting to get lower in the sky as well it's actually quite difficult to see the apex of uh, turn 16 there coming through that final corner with the, uh, the sun glare reflecting off the road there is that LMP1 car so he's uh, passed me a pretty good pretty good time you can see the uh, apex speeds between the two of us are relatively similar going through the final corner although he is quite a bit off the uh, off the LMP1 pace it would seem as he's uh, dropped quite far off the back of the leader so it's probably not the ultimate pace of the that the LMP1 car can do but he didn't help me didn't hold me up going into the final turn so quite happy with that So at this point, this is basically the last lap that I'm going to uh, going to be able to run. So I'll be pitting at the end of this lap, but you can see that despite the tyres wearing away and uh, obviously bar past their best, got barely any fuel in the car, so I'm very able to uh, keep pace with the fastest lap that I've done so far in the race and in places I'm a little bit quicker than that as well able to gain a little bit of time in the braking 
sometimes going through the corner. I would have lost about half a tenth of a second there. And then obviously accelerating off the turns as well. It's a little bit easier with the lighter fuel load. So I'm able to gain time there as I catch the curb a little bit awkwardly going through that left hander on the inside. It's quite a high curb, so if you do end up straddling it, you can catch the floor on the underside and kind of unsettles and moves the car around a little bit. Could potentially damage it as well. Just about managing to get away with it there. But uh, yeah, we're now coming into into the pit lane. So we'll dart to the right of the uh, of the cones, get the car slowed down onto the limiter. Pretty much bang on with the, uh, the speed limit there. So just a quick final check of the uh, pit strategy. We'll take on 29 kilograms of fuel. Should give us plenty. 0.1 seconds of optional repairs, so minimal damage to the car, which is good. I'm not going to be taking any tyres here in this stop. Start the car up. I think I just took a quick swig of a uh, drink there, hence the uh, the camera moving around a little bit. We're back underway, rolling once again. Hopefully we've uh, gained a bit of time on Guido as well. Most importantly, where is Bruno in relation to us? behind. I don't see him there on the relative. It seems like Ewan Marshall is the uh, the next guy behind. Coming out in sixth position. So Bruno trying to make the undercut. It looks like that that has not worked out for him. And it's going to lost a load of time and a load of ground to us. Also uh, did a tear off as well to try and clear the visor. As we came out of the pit lane. Refresh the, uh, the vision make it a lot easier and clearer to see so now we can push on hard and yep there you can see on the relative board Bruno was well he was in 7th position despite being indicated as being in 8th place the uh, position counter obviously not updating yet as it only does it when you go across the start finish line it doesn't update live uh, and he would have taken 7th position away from the previous person who was holding that place as they were in the pit stop and Bruno came past on, on circuit having already done his uh, the stop that he needed to uh, top up on fuel to get to the end of the race taking a bit off the inside there of uh, turn 16 that was probably just about the limit before activating the slowdown that you can get by uh, cutting the inside of the corner so it's quite lucky to get away with that as I was bracing myself for the uh, the slowdown to appear up on the top of the screen going down that back straight which would have cost me some time we got the gap to four and a half seconds there or thereabouts to Guido in front so we have gained about half a second or so actually if not more because I think the gap was over six seconds uh, when we came into the pit lane so Gain some good time on them there. I just got this uh, GTE leader to navigate, but we'll be able to do that here. Coming around the outside through Big Bend and onto the straight. Comfortably clear him before we uh, get to the braking zone for turn seven. Just about getting the car slowed down. Spinning up the rear tyres a little bit as we uh, kind of cut across the little left hander kink that's there on the exit over that dirt and gravel so the LMP1 leader into the pit lane as uh, as you heard by the engineer I'm very much glad that iRacing have uh, fixed that bug of uh, the race engineer spamming the leader is pitting now message whenever the leader went into the pit lane it does still happen from time to time but there was a period where it, was, it would come up constantly and he would just say it over and over and over again for half a lap or basically the duration that the uh, the leader was in the pit lane as you could probably tell it would get quite irritating but uh, yeah it doesn't do that anymore which is good Uh, 
And MP1 cars are starting to come through again. There's one coming out of the pit lane. It's going to be pretty close by them. Fortunately, the guy who did just pass me recognised that there was a car coming out of the pit lane and uh, left room on the outside there. Good situational awareness from them because it would have been so easy for him to just take his usual racing line and the, obviously the guy coming out of the pit lane would just be there on the outside and then end up kind of sideswiping each other, taking either one or both of them out. He's got another LMP1 car coming up behind, but he'll pass us quite easily under acceleration. So he's using the hybrid there. So slot in behind, not lose any time, which is good. I just got to hope that uh, Edo gets slightly caught up or held up by the. Uh, the LMP1 cars as well, although they both passed him before he gets to uh, these two left-handed kinks, so it's not going to lose any time there. As you can see, we've lost, uh, well, it was about six tenths of a second or so. I haven't really picked up the rhythm and the right lines on this, on this lap, just kind of losing the odd tenth of a second here or there in various different corners, being offline. So I just need to settle down and get the focus back in. And coming through, we have gained a whole bunch of time on Guido as the gap is now three seconds. I think that's uh, last LMP1 car. They have gave it, given him a little bit of trouble going through it, the, uh, the final turn, which cost him a whole heap of time. Now line was pretty good. Now I'm starting to sense blood a little bit. Feeling pretty comfortable pulling away from you and behind. And uh, Guido's not too far up the road. I just seem to be taking the odd tenth out of him here or there. Obviously gaining a bit more time in the traffic. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable at this stage. The car does also feel really quite good. Possibly not pushing the tyres quite as much in the early stage of the race as some of the others. And then therefore maybe in slightly better condition which is allowing me to uh, maintain my pace a little bit better. With, uh, less drop off. Just coming into uh, second to last corner. Sun's even lower in the sky now than it was previously, but it seems to be a little bit less glare than it was on the road than there used to be, so it's not quite as blinding as it was previously, although things are starting to go a little bit more orange. And now into Sunset Bend, as the sun is setting. Hence the name. So the gap to Guido is now two seconds. Gained another good chunk of time there on that previous lap. But we've got a GTE car coming out of the pit lane, so I'm going to have to be careful here to not run into the back of him coming out through the exit of turn one. It cost me a little bit of time as I had to hesitate on the throttle. But a uh, oh, big uh, twitch there as he just caught the curb going through uh, turn four. Yeah, we didn't really lose too much time to the uh, getting caught behind the GTE, which is good. I'm in a bit of a fiddle around the black box there. Just double checking how much, uh, how many laps left I've got in terms of fuel. Then also having a, a look at the uh, how much time there is remaining in the race. Left it here on the standings. Do need to flick it over one more page back to the uh, back to the relative. It's 
that is the most useful information. There we go. So gain about three, maybe four tenths of a second on that previous lap. Takedo up in front. Half wondering if he's maybe got some damage or if it is just a case that he's uh, he's run the tyres a little bit harder and he's dealing with a little bit more tyre wear than uh, what I have. He also caught this GTE car right on the exit of uh, turn one. Just held him up and cost him a little bit more time and obviously I caught him at just the ideal opportunity going through uh, Big Ben there and he's actually very kind enough to uh, give up the racing line and let me go through on the right hand side and maintain the shortest route through the corner could have just held the racing line and I would have gone uh, gone round the outside but uh, yeah it's pretty good of him to recognise the situation and that me and Guido are kind of not quite battling yet but getting closer and almost to a point where we will be hopefully fairly soon we've got more GTE cars up the road in front so now I'll make things interesting it looks like he's uh, starting to feel the pressure slightly as he's a bit out wide pushing hard through turn 16 Good run through that final corner. See him now in the slipstream with less than a second. Takedo in front and on the straights, gaining a bit of time, but as you can see, we've got a bit of dirty air going through some of the corners, but this is perfect and ideal because he's going to be stuck behind these GTE cars coming through. The sequence of turns is going to allow me to close up even more. The question is, is where are we going to fit in when it comes to the braking zone? For turn seven, we should pass this Porsche 911. Is Guido going to go for the lunch to the uh, the Ferrari in front? He's not close enough, so I'm gonna have to settle in on the rear wing of him as he settles on the uh, on the back of the Ferrari. He manages to clear him for the next braking zone, but are we going to be able to do that? I'm gonna go for the lunch down the inside, coming into turn ten. Obviously, wanting to try and maintain this very nice close distance to Guido in P3 ahead and that worked out quite well it was a little bit tight the car was a little bit twitchy in first gear but managed to sneak on through without uh, really losing any ground to Guido and to be fair he didn't really lose too much time to uh, the guy by behind him either so that worked out quite nicely for us and we just hooked up the penultimate turn there much better than he did getting right up onto the back of his car we're getting the slipstream here coming down Ullman straight going for the slingshot we've got the inside line now for Sunset Benny didn't really defend that coming into the braking zone and we managed to nose and clear ourselves ahead taking the apex and accelerating off the corner and that's us now up into P3 obviously that's very good for us now the question is, can we pull away from Guido? Or is he going to be able to hold on to the back of us? We've got an LMP1 car coming up behind as well. He's having a look down the inside of him, coming into uh, into turn three there, which is going to help us out quite nicely. That's gone and shoved him out of the uh, out slipstream range. And a second LMP1 car has also snuck on through as well. So I think these two guys are battling away, so let's put him even further behind. This LMP1 car diving down the inside of me here. Going too deep, as you can see. Just having to hesitate a little bit off through the exit. So as not to run into the back of him. So you can see accelerating off the corner. Obviously, quite desperate to uh, try and stay ahead of, uh, of Jake here that's immediately in front of us. 
they're both battling for uh, fifth position and then kind of his desperation desperation made a slight mistake but the gap to Guido over two seconds now in the space of just over half a lap so those two LMP1 cars helped out quite nicely for me obviously not for him and that was very close to uh, getting a slow down penalty with the amount that I took off the inside of uh, turn 15 there as well catching these two GTE cars at just the right time quite easily clearing one before the braking zone for sunset we're not going to be able to clear two though although it does give me the room on the inside there and allows me to slip up past him so didn't lose too much time which is good we now got to clear out on the approach towards uh, towards turn run turn one and obviously off the exit of the final corner as well this is just helping me consolidate P3 even more. Timo and Alex are way up ahead. I'm not going to be able to catch them before the end of the race. But even still, very happy picking up P3. And as you can see, we're also on for a uh, new fastest lap if I can maintain this around the rest of the uh, rest of the lap. A little bit deep though there in the hairpin and we've just gone chucked away that tenth of a second that I had gained but a slightly better drive coming off the corner I'm clawing that back now to bring it near enough neutral as we're coming into turn 10 This is one of the things that I quite liked about the uh, about the setup. It's the car it does feel good towards the end of the race and still has quite a lot of pace in it, whereas some people their pace tends to drop off. But that's through uh, through the tire wear or their own mental fatigue or or something. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, yeah, this car and this setup just tends to maintain this pace from uh, from lights to flag could potentially be my own driving looking after the tyres a little bit better than some other people could be setup related I mean, it probably is setup related geodesic guys are very very good creating their setups and that was another good run there through, uh, through turn 1 Trying to consolidate this P3 a little bit more. Try and give myself as much of a as as much of a buffer as possible. Just in case I get caught behind a GTE car in an awkward place and I go and end up losing a whole bunch of time. I got four and a half seconds. Guido behind now, so that's a reasonable gap. It'd be great if I can hop that over five seconds. Five laps of fuel left about six minutes of the race remaining from when we uh, from when I last looked at the relative board catching this GT car at just the right place as well it's not going to hinder us there through turn t uh, through turn 13 it's not turn 10 and as you can see able to pass quite easily before coming into 14 oh just catching the grass on the outside though on the entry to 15 snagged the wheel and locked up which obviously then took away all the grip that I was demanding from the uh, from the front left tyre to turn into 15 so completely unloaded so I kind of had to basically bail out of that one just about managed to keep it within the uh, the confines of the track to avoid getting a, uh, a slowdown penalty or anything like that or potentially hopping across the kerb and damaging the car So although we lost a whole bunch of time in terms of lap time, we haven't really lost all that much time to Guido behind. He didn't really have the uh, the best of laps either, so he must have picked up some damage somewhere along the line. It didn't look like his car was damaged, bodywork-wise, but it's quite easy to damage the floor on this car if you uh, if you ride a big curb or straddle one, catch it wrong, you can uh, catch some damage that way. 
and uh, Ferrari just briefly moving across that. Oh, that's the uh, Ferrari in front that's having a spin. So uh, he's managed to get in a position from that. He's now got himself up onto uh, up into P3 with uh, plenty of space. So uh, good for him. But I was kind of yeah half having a little bit of a look to see if I can maybe get him before the braking zone. Realised that I'm not going to be able to do it, so I backed out, lifted off, and just sailed in behind. And he kind of I'm not sure if it was a, a kind of a, a faint move uh, to kind of distract the guy in front. Or if he was kind of wanting to move across to basically say no, don't come through on the inside coming into this corner, uh, communicating that to me, which is sometimes what the uh, the slower class drivers do is kind of if they feel it's not safe or it's not a good opportunity, such as that kind of situation that unfolded there, where it's uh, it's not ideal to pass without costing either driver a whole bunch of time especially when people are battling for position as closely as they were as well they'll just move across and kind of semi-defend going into the turn just to try and signify to the faster class car that please don't pass me here um, but yeah in him doing that it kind of distracted the guy in front of him slightly somewhat and uh, yeah he lost the rear end and kind of went into a, a lazy half spin and uh, that gave him P3. Cost the other guy, obviously, that position. So now I can see on the relative just how far Alex and Timo are up ahead. 29 seconds to uh, Alex and P1. Timo's just behind him, though. Very, very close between the two, almost battling away. There's a uh, LMP1 car that's just. That's the race leader, in fact. It's just come on and snuck on through. It's put me another lap down, which uh, means that I could have taken two kilograms of fuel less than I actually needed to. But I took that two kilograms just in case the uh, the race leader didn't actually catch me and lap me before the end of the race. Otherwise, uh, I would have struggled to get around the last couple of laps. Unless I did a whole bunch of fuel saving, which cost it would have cost me a whole bunch of time. So we'll past this GTE before the final turn, actually uh, Ewan's managed to get past uh, Guido as well, which has kind of raised even more suspicions that Guido is suffering some damage. So here we go, the last lap of the race. Six kilograms of fuel. Got plenty of fuel there. And as it's the uh, the last lap, we won't back out completely, but we'll take it a little bit easier. Don't really need to take any risks. But yeah, I don't want to back out completely, as uh, it just kind of upset my rhythm and potentially lead to a mistake there. And as I was saying, don't want to take any risks despite riding the curves in a couple of places where I didn't want to be riding curves. So here we go then, down the back straight for the last time in this race. Coming into Sunset Bend for the final time as well. Going through quite nicely. And then coming across the start finish line to take P3. P3 
pretty happy with that and just a slight little slide there to uh, celebrate but with that result ended up gaining a nice good 35 I rating which has bumped me up to 3871 so getting pretty close to the 3900 mark which of course means we're getting closer to hitting 4k I rating hopefully you guys enjoyed that video if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. If you did enjoy it, hit the thumbs up button. If you don't want to miss out on any future content, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I shall catch you in the next video. But until then, have fun, stay safe and take care.